Learning Module 5, Lateral Torsional Buckling of Beams with Moment Gradient. We'll begin by defining the geometry of the beam. Under Geometry, again, we'll select Define Frame. But in this case, we'll just put in one bay. That's 24 times 12 inches per foot long. Select Apply and our structure's been defined. Again, we'll need to subdivide the beam into elements. So under Geometry, select Subdivide Elements. Down at the bottom, we'll increase the number of segments to eight. Select the beam, and then hit Apply. Let's change the view so we have an isometric view. So under View, select Define Views, and then select Isometric View. At the same time, let's turn off our element and node numbering. So we'll select View, Labels, Node Numbers, and then we'll select View, Labels, and Element Numbers. At this point, we've got a 3D view of our beam, without any of the element or label numbers being shown. One of the failure modes that we're going to be looking at in this module is lateral torsional buckling. Now we won't be able to see twisting of these line elements, so what we're going to do is add a couple of additional nodes and elements so we can actually see the twist. To do this under Geometry, select Duplicate Node. We'll select the middle node on the structure and we're going to duplicate it, say it's a W24 by 68, so we'll duplicate it uh, just roughly 12 inches in the positive Y direction. Let's duplicate that same node again, but this time in minus 12 inches. We can then duplicate the top and bottom nodes, let's say 4 inches in the Z direction. Hit Apply. And let's duplicate the top and bottom node again, but this time minus four inches in the Z direction. So now we've got what's starting to look like a profile of an eye shape. We can go under Geometry, Define Element, and basically click on the different nodes and put, give ourselves some elements. Hit Apply. From this node to this node, hit apply, and we'll give ourselves some elements along the flanges. From here to here, hit apply. From this node to this node, hit apply. And finally, from this node to this node, and hit apply. These additional nodes and elements will have no impact on the results of the analysis. They'll simply ride along through the rigid body motion of the center node along the beam. With the geometry now fully defined, we'll define our properties, which include the section properties and the material properties. So we select Properties, Define Section. Now we could type in all the values for the W24 by 68, but instead we'll use the database. So select Database. And we're looking at the AIC database, and we're going to scroll down until we find the W24 by 68. When we select it, the values are all typed in down below, and we'll need to hit Apply to define Section 1 as a W24 by 68. So we'll hit Apply. We can now go on and attach these section properties to all of our elements. So we select Properties, Attach Section. In this case, all elements will be defined as W24 by 68. Hit Apply, and all of our geometry is in. Now it's important to note that those additional elements that we provided in the shape of an eye shape are W24 by 68. They just needed properties. Again, they're not resisting any moment or doing anything more than allowing us to see the deformed shape of the structure. We'll now define the material properties. So again, under Properties, we'll select Define material. We'll provide it a name, steel, 
and we'll provide our E value of 29,000. Hit apply, and the material properties have been defined, and now we need to attach them to the element. So we'll select properties, attach material, select all so that all elements are defined as steel, and hit apply. Our next stop is to define the boundary conditions. We'll start by defining the support conditions. So under conditions, select define fixities. We are doing a 3D analysis here. So at the left end, we'll restrain the X, Y, and Z rotation. And we'll also need to restrain torsion, which will be about the global X axis. So that's what's going on on the left node that I select. Hit apply, and that boundary condition's been defined. We clear the list. On the right end, we'd like to just have a roller in the X direction. So we'll release the X displacement. We'll leave Y and Z in rotation about the X global X restrained. Select node two, hit apply, and the boundary conditions for our structure have been defined. Next, we'll put on the applied end moments. So under conditions, select define moments. On the start node, the beginning of the element, we're going to put on a moment about the global z-axis of, let's say, minus 1,000. Hit apply, and that moment is on. Clear the list. And on the other end of the beam, say this node, we click on it, we're going to actually put an equal and opposite end moment. So instead of using minus 1,000, I'll change it to 1,000 and hit apply. So we have now have a beam that's subject to uniform bending with equal and opposite end moments at each end. The pre-processing is now complete and we'll go on and perform the analysis. So under analysis, we're going to do an elastic critical load or buckling analysis. So we'll select elastic critical load. We are going to do a space frame analysis, again, a 3D analysis. And all we really need to see is the first mode. So we'll select apply and the analysis is complete. We can now view the results of the analysis by going under results, diagrams, and selecting deflected shape. We'll simply hit apply and we can see the deflected shape. Looking at the deflected shape, we can see that the beam has moved laterally, that is in the Z direction, and it has twisted. So this is a clear case that the beam has failed in lateral torsional buckling. The force or moments that it took to do uh, can be defined by looking at that applied load ratio up at the top of the screen. You'll note that the value is 2.265. If we multiply that by 1,000, that's how much kips inches of moment we had on each end, we can conclude that the elastic lateral torsional buckling moment for this beam on a uniform moment is 2,265.4 kip inches. It's important to note that this value of 2,265 inch kips is significantly less than the theoretical elastic lateral torsional buckling moment. The reason for this is our model did not include warping resistance. So there is warping resistance to torsion that this model currently does not include. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back and modify the moment, or modify the beam to include this warping torsion. To do this, we'll go back to geometry and define connections and we'll select torsion. Down at the bottom, you can see that the warping restraint for all the elements is defined as free. We're going to reset this to be continuous. So I'll select continuous and change the other end also to continuous. We'll then select all eight of our elements. and then hit apply. The warping uh, restraint has now been defined as continuous along all of the elements. We'll now go back and perform the analysis again. So select analysis, 
elastic critical load. We're going to be doing a space frame, looking for one mode. Hit apply, and the analysis is complete. And again, we'll go back and take a look at the results. Under results, select diagrams, deflected shape, and hit apply. This time we can again see the beam failing in elastic lateral torsional buckling, but we'll note that the applied road ratio is significantly higher. This time it's at 3.6. Again, multiplying that by the 1000 inch kips of moment at each end, we get that the elastic LTB is 3601.8 inch kips, which is significantly higher than the value before that we had at 2000 265.4. And again, the difference for this is that we've now properly accounted for warping restraint that's provided along the membered length. One of the objectives of this learning module is to see what happens when the beam is not subject to uniform moment. To do this, we'll need to go back under conditions and select define moments. So what we're going to do here is redefine the end moments. We'll leave the left end of the beam at 1,000, and let's change the right end of the beam, click on that node, to being minus 1,000. We hit Apply. Now the beam is subject to double curvature. We have equal moments at each end. And again, let's go back now and perform the analysis. So select Analysis elastic critical load. We'll leave the settings space frame in one mode, hit apply, and the analysis is done. Let's have a look at the results. Under results, diagrams, deflected shape, and hit apply. In this case, we can see that the beam is now failing a little bit different. We've got quite a bit of twist in the center, but hardly any lateral movement. But we do have lateral movement along the length of the beam. Of importance is that the applied load ratio has now gone from 3.6 to 9.8. So for this case, the elastic lateral torsional buckling moment would be 9.8 times the 1,000 or 9,838.5 inch kips. This concludes learning module number five.